everybody. I'm excited to be here drawing with you guys today. Um, I'm going to give people a few more minutes to log in. Um, I don't want anyone to feel behind or anything. So while you're waiting, um, um, but I also do a lot of um, teaching of art classes. So um, things like this, usually in person, but um, today we'll uh, be doing everything online. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I, I do lots of drawing and painting. Uh, my art is primarily painting, but to uh, be able to, you know, learn more about the world and um, kind of be able to paint what I see around me, I do a lot of drawing and sketching also. Um, and I really like uh, doing all, all kinds of different drawing and painting. Um, so while we're waiting for people to log in, there is a little uh, chat bar off to the side or down below or something like that. So if you wanna pop in there and say hi, that's uh, also what you can use if you have any questions as we go along. Um, I'm gonna try and go nice and slow so nobody gets left behind. Um, but if anything kind of zooms past you or you have a question about anything, uh, feel free to uh, pop in there, ask me any questions or uh, just tell me how you're doing. Most of the uh, classes that I've been teaching online, I can kind of see everybody. Um, so this is a little bit different. Um, so if you pop in the chat and you're able to um, say hey or ask any questions or anything like that, I can help you out. Um, so we'll just go through it like that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just grab uh, whatever scratch paper you have. Um, notebook paper is fine, uh, computer paper, maybe something that you like tested something out on before. Um, and any, if you have like a pencil or a pen, that's what I'm gonna use for this first uh, part of our drawing practice here. Um, if you don't have a pencil or a pen, you can definitely use those crayons that uh, we sent home with you. Uh, so go ahead and grab those and I'm going to just kind of hold things up and draw here. So I'll try to keep everything in the frame as I'm drawing, but if that uh, doesn't work, just holler and let me know. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, um, before I start drawing here, I'm gonna talk about patterns a little bit. So today we're gonna be drawing with all sorts of different patterns. And um, you might've uh, talked about patterns in math, uh, something that, repeats can be a pattern. So anything, um, if I just draw one circle on my sheet here, it's not a pattern yet. But if I draw lots of other circles around it, all of a sudden it's repeating and that's a pattern. So you can see that's kind of like a little polka dot pattern there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do lots of boxes on my sheet because I want to come up with as many patterns as I can think of. And you can see my boxes are a little bit uneven. Don't stress if your boxes aren't perfect. This is just our practice part. Even later, if your patterns come out a little bit wonky or uneven, that's kind of the fun of doing art. Not everything has to be exactly the same or exactly perfect. Everybody's comes out a little bit different and that's kind of the fun of it. Um, the really cool thing about these construction paper crayons that you guys have, um, they will um, write on anything. So you can write on white paper, you can write on black paper if you have other colors of construction paper or anything like that, you know, don't write on walls or anything like that, but um, they can write on any kind of paper you have. So we're gonna play around with these a couple different ways and then you can kind of experiment on them um, on your own. So like I said, anything repeating can be a pattern. Um, so if I draw lots of circles the same size, the, that's one way to make a pattern, but it doesn't have to be the exact same. So I could do big circles and then fill it back in with small circles. Same with if I draw some stripes, if I draw all the same size of stripes, that's one way to make a pattern. But what if I do a big thick stripe and then a thin stripe and then a thick stripe and then a thin stripe. So you can see there's lots of different ways to make patterns repeat. So that's what I want you to do right now. Fill your paper up with a couple different boxes and try to think of how many different types of patterns you can make. Um, it could be recognizable things like hearts and stars, or it could be things that you made up. One thing that can be really fun is um, there's a type of shape that doesn't really have uh, a defined name and that's called an organic shape. And that just means that it's like a little bit more natural, maybe like an amoeba or a cell uh, could be an organic shape. So your patterns could even be a little bit irregular like that one there. Um, you could even go back and fill in some of these big patterns like this. Maybe you have some stripes or some polka dots inside of your little amoeba shapes. 
Um, this part is really uh, just trying to think of how many different types of patterns you can make. You can use some geometric shapes too. Um, so those are the two different types of shapes. Uh, the geometric ones are usually the ones that have names. So like squares, triangles, rectangles, things like that. So uh, what happens when you stack rectangles together or what happens when you draw lots of squares? You know, experiment around with those things. Um, and we're just gonna fill our paper up right now and uh, keep drawing. And once we have a whole uh, filled up paper here, that's when we're gonna move over to the black paper. So I will just keep drawing and filling up my paper here and we will move to the black paper in just a second. So another uh, type of fun shape that you could do, could be lots of different little triangles, maybe with some little polka dots in it. One good thing to think about too, while you're drawing all of your different shapes, uh, you might wanna put on a little bit of music in the background or something um, that can really help you kind of get in that drawing groove. Um, especially if you're doing lots of the same, same shapes, it becomes kind of like a fun, repetitive motion. So it can kind of go along with the music. Um, sometimes the music can even inspire you to like, oh, this one's really energetic. This feels like zigzags. Oh, this one's really smooth. It feels like smooth lines or something like that. Um, if the music doesn't, you know, inspire you to draw different shapes or lines or something that's okay too it can just be something fun and calming in the background while you're drawing so go ahead keep uh making up different patterns here remember anything that repeats in some way can be a pattern um you could also think of some things in nature so you could draw leaf shapes over and over or flowers um or maybe you could think of some things inspired by clothing patterns like if you have a plaid shirt or a um Argyle could be a really interesting one to draw. Um, but don't, you know, don't stress yourself out. They can be as simple or as complicated as you want. Um, one thing that can be really fun too, if you start with something really simple, like say I start just with some basic stripes here. Like, okay, those stripes are a fine pattern on their own. But then what happens if I go back and fill in those stripes with like maybe another stripe going in a different direction? So that could be one fun way to kind of change up your pattern. You could even add more stripes going in another direction. This almost becomes like um, like a herringbone or something then. That's another uh, fabric term. I used to work in a fabric store, so I don't sew, but I know um, about fabric. <laughs> um, so just keep drawing and try, try out different things. If you um, have one really simple pattern, like maybe I put some big squares in here. What else could you go back in to fill in to make that square pattern a little bit more interesting? So really kind of challenge yourself to do some simple patterns, some more complicated patterns. Um, that'll make the most interesting drawing later when we start uh, drawing on our black paper. The more that you can add to it, um, the more interesting your drawing is going to be. So I'll keep just drawing on here for a minute. And um, if you fill up this paper and have even more ideas of patterns, great. Um, if you need a little bit of inspiration, you can always uh, look on Google for types of patterns, or you can even look up something called Zentangle drawing. Um, those can be as complicated or as simple as you want them. Um, you don't have to look up inspiration if you have ideas of your own, but if, if you need a little something to look up, um, I would recommend looking at Zentangle drawing. Some of those are really uh, complicated designs that will um, have some symmetry in them. So symmetry means when things um, are like reflected on either side. So like our body is symmetrical, our right side is pretty much the same as our left side, um, but they also have something called radial symmetry where everything um, goes out from the center. Like if you think of a flower, all of the petals coming out from it have radial symmetry. Um, so they have some complicated designs that you can make them as complicated as you want. Um, so you don't have to jump in that far. Um, we can just keep the design simple too, but that's something that you can look into if you're, if you start really liking drawing patterns, there's a lot more information out there. Um, so some of my favorite designs, I like kind of just wavy lines. Uh, those can be really fun to fill in with either more lines or like fill them in with polka dots or something like that. Um, I also really like, there's something called a fish scale pattern and it's it looks more complicated than it is. So I'll show you how I draw a fish scale pattern. Um, I start with the letter U and then I just draw another letter U next to it. And so I'll fill up my whole square with U's. In this case, I only fit three, but as many as you can fit in there. 
Um, obviously, if I drew it smaller, I could fit a lot more in there. If I drew bigger, I could fit less. So um, any of that works. And then I basically connected the bottom of one U to the another, like by drawing another U underneath it. So you can see I would then do another row of U's down here. And when I get to the end there, it would just kind of go off the, the edge. So a little half a U there. And the more you keep uh, adding these, the more it starts to look like a fish scale pattern. Now, the really cool thing about this, you could do this with U's, you could do this with V's. Um, you could even do it a little bit more circular or a little bit less circular. Um, but you can also go back and fill in, like maybe my fish scales have little U's inside of them. So it's an even more complicated fish scale. Um, when we get to our colors later, it can be really fun to alternate either different uh, colors for different U's or uh, all of the big U's are one color, all of the little U's are another color. So I'll show you that when we start drawing. Um, but that that's another fun one. If you do that same pattern, but with more uh, V's instead of U's, it almost looks a little bit more like I think of it like a dragon scale or something. Uh, lots of different options here. Of course, if you turn these upside down or on their side, they might look a little bit different too. Um, so you can kind of play around with that. I suppose if you did these V's upside down, they'd probably look a little bit more like mountain peaks or something maybe. Um, another really fun one to draw that I always just really get a kick out of is um, bubble shapes. So they're again, a little they look more complicated than they really are. Um, I start with just a pretty circular shape um, and they will all kind of connect to each other. So you'll see they won't all be a full circle because they'll kind of overlap and uh, connect to each other. But then when I've got my whole space filled up with circles, that's when I can go back and draw a little, um, almost like a little half C shape or like, um, like almost a little slice out of it. And that's the little reflection that uh, helps you know that that's a bubble uh, and that it's gonna reflect the shape there. So you can kind of see how I did a little bit highlight there. Um, when we grab the crayons later, you could always just make a little C shape with like a white or a blue um, or a different color if you have pink bubbles, that's fine too. Uh, totally up to you how you wanna make all of your patterns. So don't feel limited by what I'm drawing. You can get as creative as you want or keep it as simple as you want. It's really um, more just about experimenting, trying different things out. Um, so we're just gonna keep drawing for a little bit more and then we'll switch over to the black paper in just a second. I'm gonna draw some raindrop shapes here. You can see little raindrop shapes or uh, another really fun with those squiggly lines is you can turn them into vines just by adding little kind of football shapes onto them so they look like little leaves. Lots of different, you know, the more you embellish it and make it your own, uh, the more you can kind of get creative with it, do your own thing. Uh, just, just remember you want it to be repeatable. So if I did something super, super complicated, if I made one um, like a really complicated drawing of like a dog or something, um, that would be hard to do that a whole bunch of times over and over. So your uh, each little shape that makes up your pattern, um, you want it to be uh, pretty repeatable. So just keep that in mind as you're drawing these. Um, yeah, so we'll just give another minute here to think of a few more patterns. And even though I want to keep them simple, that doesn't mean that they um, can't be recognizable. It's you know kind of up to you. Um, another fun one is kind of swirls. So the way I do my swirls is I just start with almost like a big C shape, but then I just kind of keep going in. But if you have a different way of doing swirls, that's fine too. That's kind of the fun part about art. Everybody kind of finds their own groove, has their own style. Um, so one person might make swirls one way, one person might make swirls another way, and they're all cool. It's just different styles. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna set this aside now. I'll have this as a reference if I can't think of any shapes later. Um, and you can always come back and add more to this later if you start thinking of more. They're waxier than a regular regular crayon. So if you accidentally go off of your paper, you might accidentally make a mark on the table. So either be really close or be really careful when you're close to the edge, or if you know that you just kind of want to go a little bit wild with it, 
just put some extra papers or something down underneath so that you don't accidentally draw on the table. Um, if you do accidentally draw on your table, it comes up with soap and water and lots of elbow grease. So you'll have to scrub really hard. It will come up, but it'll be annoying. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about these construction paper crayons before we get started drawing. Like I said, they can draw on any color of paper. Um, they're made pretty similarly to a regular. I would almost call them the hybrid between it's like half regular crayon, half oil pastel. Um, so you guys have probably used oil pastels before. They're like a really, really waxy crayon. Um, they're super fun, but really, really smudgy and messy. So um, one thing that can be really fun with the oil pastels is if you want to work on blending, um, they blend together really nice because they're so smudgy. Um, but these are not smudgy. So you won't be able to do normal blending where you like rub it together with your fingers or anything. If you want to do any kind of blending, um, you'll have to color one crayon over another. Um, but instead of focusing on blending or anything like that today, we're going to really lean into what a nice dark mark these can make. So I'm going to get started. Actually, I'll probably use my white crayon just to get started and because this is going to kind of be the base for everything that we're going to add onto here. Um, but you can use any any color you want. Um, so how I like to get started here is I'm just going to make a couple big, loose, overlapping lines. Um, so when I'm drawing, I can either do straight lines, curvy lines. Um, they could have angles and turns to them or not. This is up to you. Um, so I'll probably do a few curvy lines, a few straight lines. Just remember you want them to overlap in at least one or two spots here. Because what we're doing, we're kind of breaking our paper up into lots of big shapes that then we're gonna fill in each of these shapes with patterns. So you can imagine right now how bored I would get drawing on this whole shape here. By the end of it, if I was filling this whole thing up with bubbles or uh, fish scales or something like that, even though I love drawing bubbles and fish scales, that's a lot in that one shape there. So I'll keep drawing a few more overlapping big lines here. Um, and if you want, if you have a couple that have gone all the way across the paper and you just want to break up some of these smaller shapes too, not all of your lines have to go all of the way across the paper. I like a couple lines going all the way across the paper because I feel like it kind of pulls the composition around. So it kind of moves your eye around and you keep things going, but maybe you want to uh, break things up in a couple different ways here. So maybe I'll have some big curved lines here. Um, this is entirely up to you and it's really, you can be as experimental as you want with this. It doesn't have to be recognizable. In fact, I think it's a little bit more fun if you try not to make it recognizable. Um, so art that doesn't have any recognizable image in it is called abstract art. So that's kind of what we're thinking about right now. Um, it could have some recognizable shapes in it though. So maybe I want like a big circle up here. That's fine, still abstract art. Uh, the kind of fun thing about abstract art, sometimes when you look at it, you might think like, oh, that starts to look like a face or, oh, I start to see trees or something like that, even though that wasn't necessarily originally in the art. It's kind of, you know, just the fun of the, you're able to interpret it and make it your own. So looking at this, I think if I break up a few of these a little bit more, I think that these uh, shapes could be pretty good here. Uh, so kind of just look at each of your shapes and think, do I want to fill this all in with one pattern? So um, kind of go around your paper, break up the shapes. If some of them accidentally didn't get to the edge, you can go back and fix that. So I'll give you a second there. That really started to look like a chicken or something, didn't it? Maybe I'll lean into that. <laughs> um, so once you've got your page all kind of divided up into little shapes, that's when you're going to take your other uh, colors if you want. If you wanted to keep this all just black and white, you could do that too. Um, but if you want to take your other colors and start filling in different patterns here. Um, so like I said, if you can't think of a pattern, you can go back and look at your idea sheet. That's kind of your um, key or your guide to different patterns and just start kind of filling them in with different uh, different patterns. And remember, you don't want to necessarily have it be too simple, but I could start off with, I could start with something simple. Like I can start with stripes here, but then if that's a little bit too simple, I can go back and fill that in uh, with something else. So I've got my stripes there. But now maybe I'll go back 
kind of add more stripes inside of that. So like kind of that herringbone idea I was talking about. So I'm alternating my stripes kind of going in different directions there. And you could definitely do like um, this herringbone idea that kind of alternates that works with wavy lines. It works with zigzags too. Um, so feel free to get creative with that. You could, even though, um, even though I'm using this mostly to draw, you could color in some of your thicker lines too, if you wanted uh, to alternate things that way. Maybe I'll do one more green kind of going the other way. And you can really change this up as much as you want. Your colors don't all have to be the same in this box. I just put all the greens in this box because I thought that would be interesting, but uh, totally up to you how you do this. Maybe my next one will be some, we'll do bubbles, those are fun. And just remember sometimes when you have these big shapes here, when they get to the edges, they'll just stop. It's like kind of like they're disappearing behind an edge or something. Same with when you get to the edge of your piece of paper, like my bubble will just roll, like disappear off the edge. It, you don't want to try and squeeze in a little bubble at the edge. That actually looks more unnatural. Uh, when they just kind of run off the edge like that, it looks a little bit more natural. Uh, not the natural has to be the the thing that we're going for. We're not necessarily going for realistic or anything, but it just kind of um, to your eye looks interrupted. If you try to like squeeze in things, it looks just a little bit more uh, intentional is, is a better word than natural. It looks like you intended for it to run off the page there. And actually, while we're drawing here, I'll stop talking in a little second so that you can just start drawing and not have to listen to me babble. Um, but intention is a good word to talk about when you're thinking about art um, because there's really no right or wrong in art. It's just um, what did you intend to do? So if you intended to have this all just black and white, like I said, that's artist intent. You get to pick that. If um, I love color, as you can kind of see by how colorful my studio is. So I um, will probably fill this up with all sorts of different colors. Artist intent is just you get to pick how you want to make something. So um, one thing to think about too, when you are picking out which patterns you want to go next to each other, sometimes you might want to jump around because you might have um, similar styles that you want to redraw and you don't necessarily want to draw them right next to each other. Um, so if I wanted to draw another stripey pattern, maybe I'll make sure I jump down here so I don't have all my stripes right next to each other. Um, another good way to mix them up is if you draw um, some smaller patterns. So maybe I have teeny tiny polka dots here. I'll alternate how filled in things are versus how open they are. So if I do like a really filled in uh, stripe down here, it's still gonna look really different than my stripe up here. So it's okay that they're all closer to each other because uh, they're pretty different. And one thing that can be really fun with those filled in stripes like that, if you start overlapping, uh, things going one way. So that's still just stripes. It's just thick, thin, thick, thin. But then if I have a stripe going the other way, it starts to look more like, um, I want to say a plaid, but that's not exactly what I mean, like a tartan or, a, you know, one of those like woven uh, fabrics, like lumberjacks where there's a word, maybe just plaid. I think I'm getting plaid and checker confused. <laughs> but you're not, you're, uh, all of your different patterns don't have to have names. Sometimes it's just fun to think of the ones that really do have names like zigzag, polka dots, things like that. But if you invent a pattern, maybe you get to name it. So <laughs> up to you. All right, so just keep drawing your different shapes. Uh, use as many colors as you'd like, alternate things. And don't forget that you can always come back and fill things even more. Like if I wanted this plaid even more filled in, I could color in the little squares in between there. Um, so you, you can really make these as complex as you'd like. And like I said, I really like to kind of alternate colors and things, but that's just kind of a style choice. 
So if you have a different style, that's okay too. Let's see what else do I want. Maybe I'll turn it on its side here, do something a little different. Oh, I can show, um, remember I said if you kind of break things up into different rectangles or squares that can make different shapes. The way that I personally, maybe I'll use a brighter color for this so it shows up well. The way I personally really like to draw bricks is by starting with horizontal stripes. So stripes that go from side to side. And then I alternate a little vertical line and that kind of divides them up. And you don't want to have the vertical line in the same spot on every line, like maybe every other line or every third line or something, because that's just how bricks are. They alternate them and it makes them stronger. Um, you know, of course, it doesn't have to look exactly like real bricks, but it kind of gives that illusion of a little bit more brick-like shape here. So that can be a fun way to draw bricks. And then now if I want to go in and color those bricks a different color or draw patterns in each of those different bricks or something, entirely up to me. I'll come back to that one. I'll just keep drawing different patterns here. You'll do that uh, viney shape I did before. So like I said, for the vines, I just start with kind of a wiggly, wiggly line, but then each of the wiggly lines will have some leaves coming off of it. It could even have like flowers or something, if that's something that you like to draw. Um, and then that one could be fun to kind of color in the background, maybe. You don't have to color in your background. You could fill in your background with more patterns or something too. It's really, you know, just how, what, what do you think looks the most interesting to you? So. I'll show you another one of my favorite uh, patterns. I like drawing clouds a lot. I think it's partly because I go outside and paint outside a lot. Um, so I look at real clouds a lot, um, but I think kind of cartoony, cottony clouds are really fun to draw too. So the way I draw them, if you draw them different, totally fine. But the way I draw clouds, I start with a flat bottom. So you can see flat, and then they have kind of a couple different bumps up top. So it doesn't look super realistic, but it looks a little bit more um, clouds in real life. They're not usually cottony all the way around. They usually have like more of a flattened bottom or sometimes they're flat on bottom and on top, depending on how the wind is up there. But that's a whole other, that's something to talk to a weatherman about or something. Um, but so I'll just draw a couple kind of alternating clouds here. If you want to come back with like uh, lightning in them or something, and they could even sometimes clouds kind of stack up on each other. So maybe you have a couple clouds that are sort of touching. So you could kind of fill it in as much or as little as you want. Um, and then my lightning bolts, I just keep them really simple, like a little Z. So. Maybe I'll come back with some rain or something in there. And honestly, lightning bolts on their own can be a really fun design too. Lot, lots of options. Do some little lines so it kind of looks like rain. It's kind of a fun little pattern. We are only a half an hour into this. So you see, so you can really uh, make this as complicated as you want. Um, our next project that we're gonna do, you're gonna need at least one or two sheets of the black paper though. So don't, don't use it all up with drawing today. Um, the, the project that we're doing next week, you could do with some white paper also or colored paper too, if you have extra paper. But um, if you don't have any extra paper, hang on to a few of these. And you'll notice today we aren't using the scissors or the glue stick. Those will be for our next one. You could, one thing I have done with these um, projects is cut out um, like similar, like if I did some patterns on a white piece of paper, you could cut those out and stick them on top of here too and then have kind of alternating uh, black and white. But for today, we'll just keep with the pattern drawing here. So this one I started with a big polka dot. I'm gonna fill that in with lots of little polka dots around it. 
make it a little bit more interesting. I'm just telling you about my examples, though. Of course, you I think I've said this a few times already, but just in case it didn't sink in, you don't have to do the same ones as me. Just if you need a little inspiration, they're here for you. But And then just to add more interest, I put some stripes in my circles. You might have noticed I am kind of turning it because, like I said, I want to keep it abstract. I don't want them all going in the same direction. Um, you don't have to turn yours as you work, but that can be kind of a fun way to move around the paper, make things look a little bit different as you go. So hopefully you've got some music going, you're just kind of getting in that drawing groove. Oh, one that I didn't show yet is, is waves. Um, you don't have to do them realistically, of course, but kind of a wave inspired pattern is almost just like repeating W's or something. It's almost like the fish scales, except they aren't gonna touch each other. So there's like a little bit of space in between them. I probably could have drawn that a little bit smaller so I could have had more lines of waves. But that's all right. Fill that back in with maybe some stripes or something. You might have noticed too, uh, you can kind of get different effects with your crayons depending on how hard you press. So if you press really hard with your crayon, you'll get a really bold, thick line. If you press really lightly, um, like I kind of did with these lines in between here, it doesn't leave as much of the waxy crayon behind. So it kind of shows a little bit of your paper underneath it still. Um, no right or wrong way to use the crayons. It's just, just different ways to use it. So maybe I'll have some fish scales up here going in a different direction. So like I said, the fish scales, you could make them um, big and wide use or long skinny use. I made these ones a little bit longer and skinnier. Just kinda for a different texture. And when I say texture in art, usually it doesn't mean a real texture that you can touch. Um, sometimes, sometimes it does, like in a sculpture or something, it's an actual physical texture or like um, the painting behind me is a little bit chunky, so that has a real texture. Um, but a lot of times in visual art, a texture is something implied. So this looks like it has one texture, whereas you know over here it looks like it has a different texture. Um, so that's something that you can play around with too depending on how you use your uh, marks, how does that change, how it looks like it would feel, if that makes sense. And that's something that can really come uh, when you fill stuff in too. If you color things in really smooth, it looks like it would have a smooth texture. If you fill it in with lots of little jagged lines, it almost looks like it has like a furry or bumpy texture. Um, can be something fun to kind of play around with. Let's see, what else do I need on here? Back to my original. Oh, I haven't done anything that looks like mountains or the other kind of like a dragon scale. So how do I want to do that? Let's see, I'll do almost And you can see if some of these don't line up exactly, don't stress about it. It's just uh, do the best you can and it'll still look great.
And don't forget, this is going to be recorded too. So um, your teacher will send this out to you. And if you need to look back later for a little bit of inspiration, you definitely can do that too. So if you feel like uh, you're not drawing quite as fast as me, don't stress. Maybe you're drawing faster than me. Maybe you're going to do a whole extra one or something. Everyone kind of works at a different speed and that's okay. You definitely don't want it to feel rushed though. You want it to feel like, you know, you really worked hard on it and put lots of work into it. Cause it shows when you spend a lot of time working on something, um, but especially art, but kind of, it's kind of true in both things. Uh, when you really put a lot of time into something, it really, it really shows. And this is really different from the type of art that I normally do. I do a lot of um, art inspired by real life. So if you um, ever have a chance to watch any of the other videos that I have on my YouTube, um, a lot of them are more um, drawing what you see, which is really fun. It's just a different style of making art. Um, you know, no one is better than the other. It's just, that's what I normally do. Um, but this one where you get to make up your own shapes and lines um, is really fun. And it's still, it's really good practice for uh, making your hand try to do what you want it to. Not saying that my hand always does exactly what I want it to, um, but it's it's good, good practice for um, drawing lots of different shapes and lines and coming up with things like that. Um, so definitely if this is something that you enjoy, keep doing it by all means. some reason I'm really grooving on stripes today. I'm not saying that you need to do nearly as many stripes as I'm doing, but they're just working for me today. You can kind of overlap them, make them different. So you can see how different that filled in plaid looks from, where's the one that filled in plaid down there? Lots of different styles. You can do that with you know, polka dots or circles or stripes or zigzags or things like that too. I haven't done a zigzag yet. Maybe I'll do a zigzag. Hold it here so you can see better. And your zigzag can be as even or as uneven as you like. Or in my case, maybe a little bit more uneven than I meant to do. I'm kind of drawn at a funky angle here. That's okay, though. Adds character. Maybe I'll fill in my zigzag with dotted lines. Oh, man, I didn't even talk about dotted lines. I love dotted lines. They look like, like roads or uh, that, you know, handwriting paper. I don't know if you guys still use handwriting practice paper. That might be a thing of the past now that everybody's typing. Hopefully not though, handwriting's important. I don't know, I say that because I like handwritten stuff. Maybe that's just kind of the artist thing though. So maybe handwriting isn't for everybody, but that's okay. Let's see, what else do I want to add on here? Oh, I have drawn leaves. I kind of like um, using a simple like football shape and then filling that in with like little stripes so it looks like a leaf and this one you could alternate colors definitely doesn't have to be green just because you're being inspired by nature and leaves you know this is your your pattern you get to make it how you want but that can be a pretty fun little shape that you could either color in the leaves or draw more stripes and in, uh, inside the leaves or maybe all draw something happening behind it. Maybe these leaves are sitting on like a pink stripey background. I'm 
That's just a fun, different way to do stuff. I think up here I will do kind of some triangles. Some big triangles and some little dots. That's what I'm thinking. Just got to decide, do I want the dots in the triangles or out? Do the dots outside of the triangles. And then maybe inside the triangles, I could color them in. Add stripes. I don't know, we'll see. And I don't have to make that decision right now. If I'm like, I know I want to put something in those triangles. I just don't know what. I could skip that, come back to it. Kind of like, you know, scooting all around. Like, I know I'm going to come back and put something more in those bricks. Uh, maybe down here, I want to color those different colors in the shapes or something like that. Um, you know, you don't have to finish each little section at once. In fact, it can be a little bit more fun to kind of skip around and uh, try different things. That's actually something I do a lot in my own art is um, set one section aside and go like, okay, I don't know what I want to do over here. I'm going to work on this part. And then maybe, maybe by the time I finish all this up, then I'll know what I want to do down here. Or if a whole uh, drawing or a whole painting isn't working for me, sometimes I'll set that aside, work on a different painting or uh, get myself a drink of water or a snack or take my dog on a walk or something like that and come back to it. Um, there's just something about having fresh eyes that really um, can <laughs> just rejuvenate you, you know, make you feel like, okay, now I know what to do. Um, Cause there's just something that happens if you try to force yourself to keep working on a piece of art that, um, that just isn't working. Um, sometimes it kind of looks a little forced. So don't feel like just because you get, gave up on it for right now that you're giving up permanently. It doesn't mean that you can always come back later. Um, but then again, know yourself. No, if you're not the type that actually will come back later, maybe it's better to fit, finish it in one sitting. Um, so that might be just something that you figure out the more you keep drawing and working on stuff. Uh, what's your working style? Do you need to do it all in one sitting or are you going to be better off uh, setting things aside, coming back to it with fresh eyes? You know, kind of another one of those no right or wrong answers. Just uh, figure out what works for you. Let's see what I want to draw now. Definitely need something up here. I'll look back at my original shapes. Oh, I haven't done that amoeba shape yet. I'll do that. And when I say amoeba, I really just mean kind of blobby, uh, not, not necessarily based on anything real, uh, just that organic shape. So not a, a recognizable geometric shape like the triangles or the or the squares or anything like that. Maybe inside of my amoeba, I'm just gonna do little squiggly lines. That might start looking a little too, too amoeba -y. I don't know, we'll see. And then maybe outside of my amoeba, I'll just color this one in. I haven't colored in a solid spot yet. That can be a nice way to alternate to, you know, maybe one spot just needs to be the background is solidly colored in. Doesn't have to be. It's just kind of has a different look to it than some of the ones with the open black. So that's an option too. I don't necessarily want to color in my whole sheet. I kind of like some of the black showing through, but you can kind of see just how that uh, sets off the amoeba shapes a little bit and looks a little bit different. You'll notice too when you're, um, coloring in bigger areas, not that that's a very big area, but when you're coloring in a solid area, uh, the strokes that you're using on your crayon, they'll really show. So if you do side to side or up and down strokes, you'll see those marks and that's fine. That's, like I said, that's just part of the texture. Um, if you're not a big fan of the side to side or up and down, you can color more of like a round circly motion. Or if you don't like that either, um, another thing that works is if you um, go one way and then go the other way, over the top of it, color just as hard. Um, don't start too hard. It actually, um, if you wanna fill in a space, it's, it works a little bit better. If you start light, go in one direction and then go over it in another direction and it'll kind of blend it together a little bit. That works really well um, with regular crayons too or with colored pencils if you're trying to blend things. You could even, um, like I could take a lighter color here and color right over the top of it 
um, kind of going in a different direction and that'll start to blend it even more. So you don't have to just color with the same color. You could uh, go with different colors too. Um, if you really start getting into blending colors and that's something that you really like doing, I recommend looking up a color wheel because um, you can kind of start to figure out, like, oh, what happens? You know, everyone knows uh, when you add red and yellow together, you'll get an orange. Uh, but then what happens if you take that orange and add more red to it? Well, it'll be between the orange and the red. So a color wheel can help you kind of map out things like that and figure out, oh, I want to make a purpley color, but I want it to be more red than just purple. So like looking at the color wheel, you can start to figure out how all of those colors mix together. Um, I have color wheels that, you know, I um, use for painting students. I take them to classes when people are figuring out um, color mixing and things like that. But you can Google them too. And you can you can actually make your own color wheel. That can be a really fun exercise if you start just really loving colors and want to uh, figure out color mixing. You just start with red, yellow, blue, and then you mix your own. Um, the, the red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors and you can't mix those yourself. You have to start with the primary colors. But then everything else from that, in theory, you're able to mix um, sometimes depending on the pigments, um, the crayons or colored pencils or paints that you're using. They, some mix better than others. So you might not be able to get the exact shades that you want, but you can try uh, mixing those up yourself and see what happens. That can be a really fun, uh, fun thing to do if you are into colors and color mixing. All right, let's see, fill in this one over here. Have I done zigzags? I did do zigzags. Let's see, maybe I'll do really little zigzags because I did big zigzags over there. Let's do little zigzags down here. Maybe I will do green zigzags in between those. Kind of a funky shape there. Oh, and I haven't done any swirls. I'll, my last spot here, I'll do like a fun kind of those swirls I was talking about. It starts almost like a C and then swirls in on itself. Maybe I'll do a couple different colors of swirls. I'm drawing out of the corner of my eye here. So if they're a little bit wonky, that's all right. Wonky swirls are still fun. Turned out okay for drawing crooked. <laughs> We've got about 10 minutes left here. If you are really digging this, you can obviously keep drawing on this. Um, our next lesson, we're going to kind of build on these drawing skills and uh, make something three dimensional. So get ready for that. But for now, just keep drawing, keep making different shapes. I will keep going for about 10 minutes here. Uh, and then we will break, but this is definitely something that you can keep doing for sure. Like I said, these construction paper crayons, they work on anything. Um, they kind of, their full potential is shown when you uh, draw on something colored or dark that normally, you know, if you've ever tried to draw with a regular crayon on construction paper, it doesn't quite show up as vibrantly um, as these do. So um, if you have some colored paper to draw on, that can really show off how bright and colorful they are, but they work on anything. So keep keep drawing patterns if that's something that uh, you're enjoying. If you like art, I also show, um, I shouldn't say if you like art, because this is kind of for anybody. Um, I have a video where I show you how to fold your own sketchbook. Um, you could kind of use it for anything though. It could be, you could write a story in it. You could um, use this as a diary, anything like that. It's just, you just need a piece of paper. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and look up that video. It's, I don't think it's very long. I think it's 10 or 15 minutes. Um, the first time that you fold that sketchbook, 
it seems impossible. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It, it just seems hard. You think like, oh, this is never going to come together. But then by like the second or third sketchbook that you folded, you're like, oh, pop, just comes together super easy. I'd say a lot of things in art are kind of like that. The first time you try something, you're like, oh, I don't know about this. But then after you've been uh, doing it a few times, you're like, oh, okay, now this is starting to make sense. I always, um, people ask me if I've always been able to draw, which I've always really liked drawing, but I, you know, nobody's born great at drawing. It's just something that I really enjoyed. So I kept doing it, kept practicing. Um, and then eventually it just got, got easier. So if you like drawing or kind of goes for anything, if you like basketball, the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. Um, so don't feel like there's anything you know, like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this or that. It's really just about practice. The more hours you put into anything, eventually it all kind of comes together. Mm. What else? Oh, I didn't really finish all my bubbles here. Maybe I'll color some of them in. Some funky different colored bubbles. So right now I'm just kind of deciding, do certain things look um, filled in enough? You know, I always get asked, how do you know when a piece of art is done? Kind of, there's no magic way to know that something is done, but um, stepping back, like really looking at it from far away, actually looking at the camera is helping me because it's, you know, twice as far away as I'm looking at it normally. Um, you can kind of take in the whole thing and go like, how oh, is it missing anything? Um, so to me, these kind of stand out as not as finished. So I'll probably go back and draw on those a little bit more, maybe this one too. Um, cause up close, they look good. When I look at it really, really close, it looks neat, but from further away, I think that I could embellish that more, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so stepping back, looking at your art from further away can give you, um, some good perspective on, is there anything else that needs to be done? Um, but yeah, there's really no no magic way to know if you're done unless if you just can't think of anything else that's, you know, like I said, sometimes you need a little break and maybe when you come back, it'll just come to you like, oh, okay, this is definitely what I need to do next. This type of drawing though, you could just keep adding stuff forever, I feel like. So it might be a little <laughs> a little harder than normal to know if you're done because I could just keep going back and filling in more and more and more. Especially like I said, if I'm listening to some music and I'm just kind of having fun drawing, like when do you stop? <laughs> Hopefully drawing down flat made things a little bit easier for you than drawing up like this for me is a little, a little bit of a challenge, kind of see what I'm doing here, but that's all right. Things feel a little bit backwards too. That's okay. All right. Well, I am pretty 
happy with most of that. Maybe I'll just come back and make this a little bit darker. Like I said, if you just kind of want to keep, keep working on what you're working on, I'd love to see pictures of these. I think your teachers are going to uh, do a slideshow at the end. So make sure you either get your art back to them or send them pictures, however they're doing that. I'm super excited to see what you guys make. You know, it's so fun. Everybody gets all the same materials. We get basically the same uh, instruction, you know, the same ideas, but then everybody kind of makes it their own and does things completely different, which I think is just super fun. Fill these in. And then maybe we want some big circles in here too. Let's kind of change it up a little. Big and little circles. Let's see, does it need anything else? I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe I'll color in the bricks a little bit more. Shade them in with different colors. And another thing to keep in mind, if you get to the end of the strong and you're like, okay, that was fun, but I don't know what I want to do with this. If you don't necessarily want to hang it up or anything, you can always turn um, all of these drawing and coloring papers into collage papers. Um, so sometimes, especially with abstract things like this, sometimes you can uh, turn it into something else later. I'll talk about that a little bit more in our next class, but something to think about that you can always hang on to. Uh, if you have, if you do lots of drawing, lots of coloring, things like that, you can always reinvent it and turn it into something else later. Um, so, I mean, anytime you're making art, it's not a waste. You know, you're uh, drawing and coloring and having fun. Uh, it's always a good activity, but sometimes you can turn it into something else in the end and reinvent it and that can be even more fun. So all right, we did it. We colored and drew for an hour. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Um, like I said, I cannot wait to uh, see these when uh, you get them all together in the slideshows. I'm going to save this video. So if you um, want to hear my voice for another hour, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you uh, want to go back and see any uh, of the things I was talking about, or if you have any questions for me, you can send those through your teachers too. So I would love to uh, hear back from you and looking forward to doing this one more time with you guys. So um, stay safe, keep drawing and have fun. And I'll see you guys soon. Okay. <laughs>